Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our squad reaction to Martin O'Neill's provisional squad face Wales and Poland. Nothing exciting. Where to begin? Where to begin? I sat at work waiting for the squad announcement. Kind of busy at the time, but nothing, nothing too major. It's on the back of my mind and I'm thinking, Hooban, Duffy. Then you text me, it's no rice. I'm like, what in the hell? It This completely stopped me. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I mean, you might as well go through the names. I mean, well, well, then, the goalkeeper just does it for me at, at, at the start. Like, fair enough, Randolph's number one. Yeah, I think that's. I think everybody agrees on that now. It's, but Randolph, but it's after this, it's a little strange. It's Doyle, mm, O'Hara, fair but, enough. Uh, McDermott then as well, getting the first call up. He's a player I haven't watched. I won't lie, but yeah, he's playing in Norway. Yeah, Donegal grandparents or, or something like that. He's playing underage football. So, pr well, you you look at that and you think maybe that's going to be a debate, but. The debate goes elsewhere. Um, again, disappointed me. I would have liked Sub the likes of Supple or something like that to be to be involved. Like it just seems, and I suppose this is really a proper indication of the Martin O'Neill era is where he's just kind of doing things that don't really have. You can't put a long term pattern of them together. It's just kind of make it up as you go along almost. And you, I just can't see what was the point of bringing him in for a couple of friendlies, not to give him any game time, and then just to. To boot him out of the next squad, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's it's just the same old Martin O'Neill, and and everyone's fed up of it. You look online and you look at the, the you know, the, yeah. the backlash from it. Like it's it's just the same old story of yeah. plucky little Ireland, and that's what it seems so what, to be. What chance do we have? Just plucky little Ireland, Ireland, sorry, all the time, and it's just it's so annoying. Like I have to say, you know, we're not even onto the defenders yet, but there's no real shock in terms of the defense. You know, there's a, there's a, some players in there that you know, are fair enough on warrant. We've we've kind of wanted them in there. You're looking at Yorenda Stevens, Greg Greg Cunningham, yeah, yeah. John Egan, uh, yeah. Sheffield United as well. He's obviously done well. It's started scoring recently as well. Um, uh, Matt Doherty obviously did well. Um, Lennon as well. You know, th th they're the likes of the players that we've been calling out for. So I I think of any of the group, any of the areas really is probably defense is the one. I think everybody's a bit more settled on really yeah 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 and then you know obviously it's good to have coleman in there he's obviously our best player um our captain he's he's obviously going to be a mainstay there and obviously if you're going up against garth bell and the likes you're going to need coleman there because he tends to he tends to kind of drift away from where coleman is because i don't think he has Coleman for for pace but he might do now since the leg break but yeah, uh, he used to kind of drift away it's, from It's him. definitely like if there's one player out of the Irish setup that you want to mark Bailey, it's Coleman. I yeah. think everybody agrees on that as well. Um, uh, but yeah, like the defence to quickly run through it, Coleman, Christie, Matt Doherty, good game against City at the weekend actually. Yeah, he's scored on goal. Yeah, let's, let's not say that. Like, good game. <laughs> uh, Duffy, who had a very good game against Liverpool actually. Uh, Kyo, Clark, Long, Ward, Egan, Stevens, Lennon and Cunningham. As I said, Probably it's the one area where not that many people will have many complaints around that. that well, a lot of people were were, were uh, complaining obviously about Stephen Ward uh, before, and that was the first time he's been back now since um, the Denmark game. Mm -hmm. That's the first time he's been included. Yeah, but like I think it's I think it, I think like the the trouble is with this new competition, and I'm not going to get too bogged down to it, but it gives managers like Martin O'Neill the chance to go. Oh, I can't really you know take any chances here. I have to go back to standard. Yeah, to but in all seriousness, it's a it's a glorified. Friendly. Yeah, but he's going to look at it like it's a competitive. It's a competitive competition. There's a mini chance of um, qualification. So that's the one thing I think we spoke about back in back a couple of months in the summer when the competition was announced, etc. That's the one gripe I would have with it. It just at least with friendlies, there's more honest on him to maybe try a few more players. At least when I think when he has this sort of a competitive game, if you want to call it that, he's more excused to go back to he's tried and trusted and complete take all the risk out of the game and you know go old school for want of a better word and i think the likes of ward back on the squad kind of sums up that mentality no i don't i just you know you're looking at ward and he's he's probably i don't think there's any other players maybe besides hendrick playing in, in the europa league to be yeah, fair to him. yeah yeah so, i'm probably yeah. being a bit a bit critical there of him i just he had won by game yeah but yeah he's pushing on a bit now as well i would like i would like to just to try and okay fair enough cunningham and uh, and uh no, Stevens, Cunningham. Stevens are good, but you know, I mean, Steve, uh, Cunningham's only after getting the move to Cardiff. There, we don't know if he's if he's yeah, good. It, hasn't really he hasn't. Ward's been playing, and he only yet. had the bad game against Denmark, and everybody knows that, and it's just one of them things. And you know, 
we've had players have bad games before. And no, come agree. Back, yeah, so. no, I don't want to be too critical. Like it's 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 just maybe it's a small part of me where I would like a little bit of change. But yeah, look. No, I get you, yeah, and yeah. I, I probably put the two in front of now just in terms of um, just because of their legs and stuff like that. But you have to say Ward's still starting for Burnley and he's playing. Yeah, uh, no, I get, the, I, get, well. I get, so I get, I get, probably the like of our Irish players who's actually actually playing. You know, actual. You yeah, know, I just. Instead I, of, and players like, for example, for Liverpool, yeah, yeah. who are just playing on the bench and they're in the squad, everyone's like, oh my God. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These players are actually there's, playing. There's definitely that hysteria that goes with that. It's just, I think. He's don't get me wrong. He's been great servant and all that, but you know what you're going to get, and I think that's it. It's not going mm. to get any better. It's probably if anything, it's probably going to deteriorate a bit because I think his pace is starting to go a little. And I like I think if you're if Ward's in the team and you're the opposition, I think you target him. I'm trying to get, I think you try and get in behind him. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm actually trying to defend him here because I don't think he's that bad. I think people give him a bad rap for one back game. Yeah. Um, but I no, I I, 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 could, I could probably see if Cunning if Cunning keeps going the way he's going, I could probably see him getting in there. And uh, or or Doherty can play there too, and there's yeah. Christie as well, like that. So, for me, it's we have a serious lack of wingers. And he was coming out the other day saying, "Oh, well, Michael Duffy this and Michael Duffy that, and Lord enough to be this and that." He won't get in the squads till he till he gets a move. And you wonder why these players from the League of Ireland can't get in. You look up Burke did. He scored a couple of goals and got in and done very well. Got a move for himself. Absolutely delighted for him, and we'll come to him in a few minutes. But Huben had a lot more goals than. Early yeah. on, we were sc- sc- screaming out for a goal score and target man. We still, still Pace. the players that we have. John Walters is a thirty-five or thirty-six. Yeah, the, the, like the one player of the whole squad that I can't get my head around is Walters. No, I can. I I can understand Walters there, okay. But what I'm saying is, he, for me, he shouldn't be a starter. And no way. It's just like okay, have him up there with with, with Long. I see the logic behind it, but my my biggest problem is. There's no goal scorer in that in that strikers, and they even have Burke in that list of strikers. He's not a striker; he's a number ten midfielder. Um, so if you actually count up, there's what four forwards there. Yeah, and like man Robinson, he's not. Is he a goal scorer? I mean, I don't think he's a great rock record. Just describe him as a player that takes a man on, and I like that. I think it was the quote, which was a bit, bit crazy, a bit crazy, really. You know, wasn't Aiden it? O'Brien, I have to say, I haven't really been following him. Is he still at Millwall? Yeah, he's still at Millwall, yeah. And uh, again, I haven't... like he, He's not one of these players that would grab a lot of attention and would say that he's just blown it out of the park. I think, to be fair with him about Duffy, I think he will call up Duffy just for a spite, just to take him take him away from the North and qualify him up for the Republic. But I think they're still waiting on international clearance. So I think, well, all the indication was that he said was we'd call him up if we had this clearance and he'd probably be in the next squad. Yeah, but if he's caught... But this is the thing I don't understand and I'm constantly saying it online is how can he get... You know, a mention and Burke a mention, and Hoopin can't, and he's scoring 25, yeah, no, 26 goals. Hoopin's Hoop, in the squad for me, absolutely all day long. Because you're looking at the, there's no one there that scores goals. Because like it's, it's not just goals as well. Hoopin gives you. I think he would be perfectly suited to international football. He's he's strong. He'll run the channels. He'll hold the ball up. He but can he presses score. from the front as well. Yeah, he's just like just watch him play. Watch him watch him play this season, and, and like he would fit perfectly into a Martin O'Neill team. That's what I can't really understand. Um, it looks well, a bit like Shane Long's. <laughs> Jesus, and Aguero, gonna, and we're going to we're going to a bigger Aguero, a better a better Aguero, Galway's yeah, a right. Galway's Aguero, and all that. Uh, let's go back to midfield and a bit of a kind of a mixed bag, really. I'll run through them quickly, and we'll have a bit yeah. of a chat. Judge Henrik, Buran, Brown, Williams, Myler, Arthur, Hogan, Odada, and McLean. Yeah, look, it's it's it's. There's not much there, change there, is there? Let's be honest. I mean, obviously, there's no Royce in there, and that's obviously been the huge talking point. Where I think we'd, we'd just be better off just doing a separate yeah, video to that and just talking about what we actually do have and how we kind of go about that. I mean, George, I get that. Yeah, uh, yeah, no complaints. He, he's deserved it. Um, he's obviously had his long layoff from injury, and, you know, everyone wants him to do well. He scored the winner against the USA, and, you know, you see how much that meant to him. And a lot of people are kind of coming out and saying he's kind of similar in the mould of, of, of Wes Houlihan that's a bit uh, early now no but it's, it's similar in the mould in terms perhaps, of career I'm not perhaps. saying he's, he's going to have the same impact as him but he's that type of player then you're obviously looking at Jeff Hendrick uh, who scored the weekend as well but he it's, he, he the, plays a completely different role to what he does for any for, to yeah, what he does for him it's, it's a very difficult season for Henrik. Um, it looks like Burnley are going to lean more towards a 4-4-2. And Henrik always, always struggles playing as a two in midfield. He's your classic 
plays with three that one that pushes up and that's that's what he to be fair that's what he we got the best our Burnley got the best out of him last season but they've gone with a more direct approach they look like they're going to do that starting off this season which would I would suspect his game time is going to be limited if if they stay with that formation. Unfortunately, we're not. We don't have abundance of players, so he's probably coming. He's always going to be in the Irish setup, no matter what. But well, he's he loved the Europa League games as well. Do you know what I mean? So he, if he's not playing Thursday, he's more than likely be playing on Sunday. Possibly, yeah. Um, for now, anyway. Yeah, until unless something drastic. Well, actually, well, they have to overcome obviously the 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 last um qualifying game. But yeah, like Henrik is almost this player that sums up everything that's nearly wrong with the Irish setup. I have so much hope for him. He's so much quality. But it's just trying to get that like obviously formation or football philosophy doesn't doesn't help him at times. But you always feel like you could get a hell of a lot more out of him. Uh, and I don't think we've seen the best of him in Ireland short yet. Yeah. Well, I I think it's more a case of what's around him. I mean, when the ball's constantly getting lumped over you back and forth, there's not much more you can do to take down and start kind of mm-hmm. playing around with it, is there? So yeah, so, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to see how Shane Duffy does because obviously when we played, I don't mean to go back, but we, I just remember thinking of someone who, you know, has been really good in the Premier mm-hmm. League of late. But he, for me, in the last game against Wales was outstanding, and if he can kind of recreate that again, obviously David Moyler was was very good in that game, but I don't see him starting in this game. I think the likes of your Hoover here and your Alan Browns um will be ahead of him in the pecking order. No doubt, uh, I think would be slightly Harry ahead. Arthur. Yeah. Hart, Arthur like has turned into a proper a proper jockster altogether for Cardiff and he's he's you know, he's getting lads sent off, you know, he, he's winding people up the wrong way. He's settled into life straight away there in the Cardiff. And for me he has to be a starter, I think, in this Irish setup. Um Obviously, you know, hasn't played a lot for Bur- for Bournemouth last Doesn't season. Doesn't tend to play that well for Ireland. That's all I'll say. Yeah, but he's another one of these players that's not helped by the ball being really up in the air the yeah, whole time. Yeah, and yeah. he's shown like he, that he's shown like he's he's and we don't have many of them. He's proven Premiership player. Um, got a got a bit of life again with Cardiff, and you know, I think he has to be one of the one of the first teams in that midfield too. Now, I think well, I personally would have him straight in the team. My mother's been a big fan of his. Yeah, but there's people out there that would say that McLean has to get into that team somehow. And I disagree. Yeah, but pe- there is people that are going to say that because when he does play for Ireland, he does tend to to go up a level, and um, you know, yeah, he seems to be putting in a lot of effort with Stoke. Scored the weekend. Um, yeah, place. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he fought with his goalkeeper as well yeah. at some point last week. So a bit argy bargy there as but, well. But he just for me, he embodies what Ireland all about. He even came out today on his Instagram story with the he had the kissing the kissing the badge, and you know, I wonder um, who he's referring to there. Yeah, but you kind of know. Uh, and oh no! Like, don't get me wrong. Nobody will doubt. You know, his love for the his love for his country and his love for his shirt and all that. And and the one thing that you can't question is his passion. I just think sometimes his passion goes too far and he gets yeah overboard. Oh, no, I agree with over, that. Over, over, overboard with it, and we when he's kind of in that red mist, I don't think we get the best out of him. Yeah, and he loses the rag. He does, and then both in terms of his temper and both of his kind of positional play, and like we've seen and we've talked about many times, him being playing a quarterback in the middle of the midfield isn't what's best for him, both him or Ireland. Or uh, finish the game as a centre forward. Yeah, like he's. It's just. Oh, I won't even. I won't even start. We'll be here all night. It's so talk about getting the red haze. I'll get in the red haze again. <laughs> talking about that, it's it's. But the problem is, and I'll I'll ask you straight out. Yes, he, if people say he wants to get on the team, where do you play him? What's his best position? Out left, in a four four two. That's his best position. That's not our best formation. Mm-hmm. I think our best formation right now is because we have so many good wing backs and full backs that we should be playing a three five two. Um, with three centre halves and two wing backs, obviously with Coleman and whoever you want on the left. Even think even Matt Doherty can play on the left. Or if you want to do a four four two, I would maybe even have Doherty on uh, as a right back and Coleman as a right mid, and then whoever you want to the left and McLean on on the left. And if you're gonna go for a four four two, would maybe probably Walters and Long, which is more than likely what he's gonna do. Um. So there's kind of a couple of ways of looking at it. I think our best formation would be a 3-5-2. I kind of thought that we did well in the... Uh, the French game, wasn't it? We played that we played three at the back. I think it was Turkey. Did we, I think we played... Did we not play three at the back against France? Well, I, could, I could be we, wrong, we, but we, we definitely we definitely tried it in a couple of the, that yeah, series of games. Yeah, but it seemed to kind of work well. Then we did it with uh, against the USA, but we didn't really look that comfortable on, uh, at that time. But I think... We were we didn't we had obviously John it was a big thing with John O'Shea and they were trying to fit him in yeah. and then they were making the uh, substitutes and stuff like that 
That's fair enough. But I just feel as though I think three five two would suit us best just because the amount of if like if we're looking at the squad as a whole, how many players are gonna fit into that? Because we don't have that many wingers. You're probably looking at McLean and O'Dowd as our out and out wingers mm -hmm. and there's not that much there then. Yeah, no, like I, I would personally love a three at the back as well because I think it just gives that bit of structure that um, you know, get a grip on the game and you know, it doesn't have to be a uh, you know, a, a solid three, like what it can be flipped. Well, you've got three good players you can just kind of bring up. You've Clark, Duffy, and uh, Kevin Long. Yeah. Then you've got John Egan as well. Yeah, just players that can just be, you know, take it into midfield and just, just move it up a little bit. I think I think that would get a, the best out of a lot of this, this current bunch of players, particularly then in the attacking sense. I think it'll bring a, a hell of a lot more out of it. But that being said, if you play that system, I think it's difficult to get McLean in the team. Yeah. No, I was, I agree with, but the, but then again, it comes down to the final squad because that's obviously only a provisional, so that will be kind of be more, more of a, a talk for another day. But what I would ask you is, what would you rate that squad out of ten? And whoever else is watching this, you know, you've you've you give us a, ra a rating out of ten. I thought I thought the only time today I was going to get stumped was when you've told me Rice wasn't getting in. Now you've caught me. What would I rate that out of ten? I'm going to give it a five. I would going to say six. Um. Yeah, it's probably six out of ten, and that's been yeah, it's been a bit of a bit Irish bias to say there as well. It's like a D plus, isn't it? yeah, something like that. Yeah, mine's more just, of an E. Just uh, careful now. That's for later on, is it? Um, yeah, like, <laughs> is it a squad that jumps up and down and excites you? No, but there's no real just a surprise. Like I didn't. I'm I'm gonna be honest, and you know, I'm sure about many other people that are watching this now. Probably didn't know who that other goalkeeper was, Sean McDermott. No, I heard I heard about him a while. Sam, Sean, Sean McDermott. There we go. Can't even get his name right. I did. I got right the first. <laughs> but like, yeah, no, I've I've heard him mentioned previously. Um, because people are comparing them to Mister. Do you want to join wave it to the camera there? One last thing. <laughs> um, he'd, he'd probably be on the, the intro with yeah. the the Johnny Gall roots and all that. Yeah. Um, I I'd be lying if I said I watched him play. Um. He might, he might even judge by supple the last time he might yeah. even get a game well look uh, that's kind of all we, we, we have really to say about the squad let us know your thoughts uh, in the comments in regards to the squad who do you think should have been in there do you feel like uh, well, obviously Declan Roy should have been in there but do you feel like <laughs> someone that's Anybody not in the squad that you would have liked to see let us know in the comments because we'd like to hear your opinions on it as well if you have a rating for the squad we'd like to hear that too um, don't forget to subscribe we're on our way to 3000 subscribers now so um, if you could please do that, that'd be fantastic. And uh, don't forget to follow us on all our other social media outlets. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button now. And if you never want to miss a video, click the bell for alerts. For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV.